something wonderful is happening to each and every one of us right now. In the far reaches of an infinite cosmos, there's a galaxy that looks just like the Milky Way with a solar system that's the spitting image of ours, with a planet that's a dead ringer for Earth, with a house that's indistinguishable from yours or mine, inhabited by someone who looks just like you, who is right now listening to me and imagining you in a distant galaxy just reaching the end of this moment. And there's not just one such copy. In an infinite universe, there are an infinite amount. In some, your doppelganger is now reading or listening to this talk, watching this video along with you, along with the others. In other parts of the universe, he or she has skipped ahead or feels in need of a snack and has just um, stepped away from the, the phone or the computer and uh, gone to get a snack. In others, still, he or she has, well, less than a felicious disposition and is someone you'd rather not meet in a dark alley. That was from The Hidden Reality by Brian Greene, talking about the multiverse. Many are speaking about that in the last decade or so. Before it was more of a new age kind of thing. The whole five, fifth dimension, it's not the musical group, um, idea. But science is now catching up with this idea and actually looking at the multiverse. How does that make you feel? Kind of makes your head want to explode that there's, you know, uh, if I was thinking about it, there's another J and another dimension in this universe that is speaking, but now is speaking this way, standing this way, but still speaking the same words or something, or there's a mean version of me in some universe. It's just that it just not only does it make my head explode sometimes, other times I think that's fascinating. That's, that's about coloring outside the lines of imagination. You know, when we were very young, and uh, Gary was talking about this earlier, usually before first grade, we all colored outside the lines. It's a part of the childhood development, the scribbling. And then overnight, seemingly, this master of scribbling will hand you, and, and those of you who have been parents um, understand this, they hand you this piece of artwork where they show that they start coloring within the lines. And of course, as a parent, you're all excited and you do the happy parent dance and you, you put that picture on the refrigerator or wherever you put such things. Rachel um, Anazato, who's a PhD associate professor of psychology at Fordham University wrote that switch that we're talking about. That switch in coloring skills is a milestone for children because it shows that fine motor skills are coming in and cognitive skills are developing. And Denise Bod Bodden, another PhD who's a principal lecturer at the T. Denny Sanford School of Social and Family Dynamics at Arizona State University, she said, as children become aware of boundaries, they start thinking and planning around them. Soon she may color, or he may color with an understanding of spatial vocabulary, such as above, below, and between. And when children start coloring inside the lines, they're learning about cause and effect. 
coloring within the lines as a child starts uh, us tapping into the idea of self-control and self-confidence, actually. It's a level of focus and concentration that helps us master many other tasks in our life, in our world. It fosters confidence in ourselves. We get a lot of praise, usually, when we color within the lines. And that happens as an adult, too. When we color within the lines at an organization, when we color within the lines of the rules and regulations of society, we get a pat on the back. We get a, yay, good, you're a good person, you're a good citizen. Now, all that is great in the development of a child, in the um, idea of um, a society um, organized and working with kindness and respect of all. Or as a newbie to a skill or an industry or a practice or a new purpose, you want to follow the quote unquote rules you want to you want to um, um, model yourself after someone who has taken these ideas and these rules and really kicked up in the world with it. You're staying within the lines, you're following a systematic regimen and and an order, and that's valuable. But it shouldn't be just the only message a person gets. And it's time for us to think outside our boundaries of thinking, outside our ideas of what meditation is, our, our ideas of what, of what prayer is, our ideas of what philosophy is, what we believe, the action we take. We put ourselves in boundaries. And sometimes we should. We don't want to take from somebody else. That's a boundary. We don't want to hurt somebody else. That's a boundary. And that's a boundary most of us will keep. But there are boundaries, there are restraints we must remove in our lives so that we start once again coloring outside the lines, even though we are coloring with confidence and self-control. To think creatively, to behave in an unconditional um, and unconventional manner. To not follow some of the rules. Now, don't get me wrong, you can create some very imaginative and wonderful things to be experienced in your lives by doing exactly um, the steps that you were taught in whatever spiritual practice that you do, the various ones that you may participate in. But expanding beyond them is like exploring that multiverse of the mind. Now think about where would computers or the internet be without non-linear thinkers? Because we think of scientists as thinking very linear. Math is very linear. But there was a woman, Augusta Ada King. She was the Countess of Lovelace in the 1800s. She was an English mathematician. She worked on a thing called the analytical machine. And it's considered right now before computers were even invented, she was considered the first computer programmer on this, this idea of this um, analytical engine, sort of like a calculator. But she kept thinking there's something more to this. Or Steve Jobs and Steve uh, Wozniak of Apple. What if they didn't think out of the line? Uh, if they didn't color um, out of the lines of what IBM had put together in the computer world and others. Or Vint Cerf, there's a name you probably don't know, Vint Cerf or Bob Kahn, they together created the internet or the idea and a lot of the um, organization that was put together to make the internet happen. Imagine science without Einstein, Newton, Nikola Tesla, Galileo, Marie Curie and radioactivity, Rosalind Franklin. Imagine our lives right now and our future lives right now if Rosalind Franklin didn't do her work, which, be, which made the description of DNA's double helix structure occur. 
Now, I know she didn't get the Nobel Prize for it. Two guys did. But she did the work that made it possible. What would philosophy be without Plato and Aristotle, Confucius, the Buddha, Lao Tzu, who wrote the Tai... Um, just went right out of my head. What about John Locke? Do you know who John Locke is? John Locke, through his philosophy, inspired the founding fathers, inspired Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson to create this idea called the United States. It was his philosophy, the social contract, or Ralph Waldo Emerson, or Ernest Holmes. Where would the entertainment and literature world be without out-of-the-line colorers? like Reed Hastings and Mark Randolph, the guys who started Netflix, who changed all entertainment, this thing called Netflix. Walt Disney, Stan Lee, in acting, Marlon Brando changed the whole idea of what acting was. Uta Hagen, Stanislavski, in literature, Emily Dickinson, Edgar Allan Poe, who, though we think of him as kind of a thriller idea, was actually the first science fiction writer. Or, of course, Shakespeare, who changed everything in playwriting. How about um, innovations in the painting world? What would the painting world be without Picasso's Guernica in 1937? Changed the life of the art world. Manet, Monet, Van Gogh. Starry, starry night. What about Jackson Pollock? He did this piece called Blue Holes Number 11 in 1952. Changed things. That whole splatter idea changed the art world. Not everybody likes that, but it changed the idea of composition. So to Da Vinci's Mona Lisa, we think of it as just this little famous painting with this woman with this smirk that was painted in 1503. But in 1503, that changed the whole idea of composition and of portraiture. Salvador Dali, Warhol, Klimt, Vermeer, Callow, all of these people changed the art world by, in their own way, painting outside the lines. Music too, box harmonies, Debussy, my personal favorite, his creation of mood and imagery using notes is incredible, incomparable. Gershwin, who mixed um, orchestral music, classical orchestral music with American jazz and came up with uh, uh, an idea of music that totally changed popular music from then on. Hildegard van Bingham, changing the chant world. Beethoven. The Beatles. And finally, uh, how about the working space culture that started a decade or so ago in places like Google and Zappos where the employee perks weren't just coffee and an occasional um, dozen donuts that one of your pals brought. There was free food there. There's complimentary wellness services, basketball courts, a place to lay down and take a nap. I've seen these places. Bring your dog to work, no problem. Boy, they didn't do that in the 70s or 80s, and maybe even some of the 90s in some places still don't do it now. But these people step out to be creative and made a, a society within their organization that inspires creativity and see what happens with their companies. Explosive. What did they all see by, by being outside the lines? They saw opportunities. They saw innovation. They saw change. They saw an upgrade. They saw the infinite. They saw love. The love of their organization, the love of their product, the love of their, of their art. And the expansion of that love made them impossible to stay within the lines. Now here's the thing, um, here's something to think about. This is one of those questions, you might have gotten this question at a, um, 
at a job interview, and I, I just want to bring this out because I, I think this is so great. And it makes us think. And that's what this is all about is thinking. So imagine this. You're driving along in your car on a wild, stormy night, and it's raining. It's crazy raining. And you pass by a bus stop, and you see that there's three people waiting at this bus stop, right? One is the perfect partner you've been dreaming about. That perfect partner, that person standing there. An old friend of yours is standing there who once saved your life. And the third person was an, an elderly person who looks as, as if she's about to die, feeble. So your car has only one seat in it. So you can only pick up one and, and help them. Which one do you choose to pick? Think about that. Do you pick up the, the elderly lady because she's going to die and you should save her first because it's an emergency? Or do you take the old friend because he once saved your life and, you know, this be a perfect chance to pay him back in this horrible weather? Who knows when the bus will come? But if you pick either of those, you're, you're, you may never be able to find that perfect mate again. He or she or they will be gone once you take off. Think about it. It's a moral and ethical dilemma. They, when you're being interviewed by HR, they're trying to see how your mind thinks. But a decision has to be made. Save a life, make a repayment to, for a saved life that, that happened to you. Or, you know, have your perfect partner in your life. Now, the usual clever, imaginative, thinking out of the box answer. Now, remember, we're talking about coloring out of the lines, not thinking out of the box, though they do seem similar. So the usual clever answer is, I would give the car keys to my old friend and let him take the lady to the hospital, and then I would stay behind and wait for the bus with the partner of my dreams. Now, there's no real best answer there, especially in these days of the cell phone. You could call and get them another car or cab or something like that or call an a, a, um, ambulance for uh, the elderly lady. There's all kinds of answers there, but the, 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 the idea is that it makes you think. And that's what all this is about, is thinking, thinking outside the lines. Arthur C. Clarke wrote, the only way of finding the limits of the possible is going beyond them into the impossible. It's the what if. We have to step into the what if. Envision in our minds. Imagine in our minds what it is. And think big. It strengthens our intention. It strengthens the intuition and the um, ideas that come into us. It strengthens our relation to any conditions they may, that may show up because we have expanded our mind to knowing that even the bad that shows up in our lives can be overcome all the time or changed or adapted to or healed. Dr. Joe Dispenza reminds us that the brain doesn't know the difference between a real life event and imagining. So if we keep imagining, that doesn't mean we're ignoring everything that's going on around us. It doesn't mean we ignore our goals. It doesn't mean we are ignoring our usual spiritual practice. It means expanding it. Because then we step into and we, we expand the nodule called perception, which is what this whole year is about. Expanding our perception, honing in our our perspective, uh, sorry, our perception on the expansion. Isn't that an interesting dichotomy? Honing in, focusing in our perspective, our perception of an expanded universe and life. It's an energy that colors everything and helps us color outside the lines. Ernest Holmes said, 
our whole endeavor is to personalize the impersonal. That is to individualize the creative spirit. While we can't think of God as an infinite person, that is, as a being with a limitation whatsoever, we should think of the creative spirit as that infinite being in whom all personality is rooted. Thus, each is continuously individualizing God, or whatever you want to call it, and thus also each is individually using the law of cause and effect in any way they desire. Think of God, the universe, the Big Bang, whatever, as ex it's expansive. Where's the end of the universe? There is no end. It's constantly expanding. They see that as they develop stronger and stronger telescopes. It's expanding. Now, following the steps of spiritual mind treatment or the steps in getting into meditation or, or the twice a day idea of meditation or any of that suggestions and the mm, maybe you could say rules of your spiritual practice is okay but really where it gains strength is when you make it your own where you inspire you where you open your heart where you expand your heart and if that is um, messing up by messing up the steps order or by changing the idea of how you get into your meditative practice, whatever that is, then that will empower you. And you may think, well, I'm not so clever or imaginative or creative. I can't do that. Well, that's a bunch of BS. Yes, you can, because it can be minute little things. I'm not asking you to change the world, just change maybe the time, the place, the length anything in there that makes it your own and color outside the lines of your spiritual practice. The words, change the words. I try to change the words every time. Even if I follow the steps, I try to find a new way that sparks something new in me. Play and find what works best for you and reveal that divinity in you. Vibrate at the speed of the divine. Bust through all those ideas of what's the right way to pray. What's the right way to manifest. And then soar and zoom through this busting through. A friend of many of ours in this organization, Bonnie McBird, she's a, an author, a novelist, a, a writer. Um, her husband is Alan Kay. Alan Kay is a, uh, he's a scientist, a futurist of, of sorts as well. And he had a lot to do with uh, Steve Jobs and, and Apple. Uh, he wrote, the best way to predict the future is to invent it invent it color outside the lines of logic religion spirituality this philosophy anything i've said to you any tools i've brought to you anything you've learned about spirituality spiritual practice everything and make your universe a multiverse of possibilities so that you will make the seemingly impossible possible. Namaste.